Okay guys, with a little bit of viewer advice, we've figured out how to remove the fork cups. Now we've got the frame balanced in a nice bit of wood which, as luck would have it, has a sort of groove in it just right for this steel tubing which makes it a great frame stand. Now we're going to drift these cups out using this metal rod with threads at both ends that I found in a toolbox I inherited. Uh, and we're going to just put it in the frame, in the head tube like this, and so that it's just on the edge of the fork cup. And now we're going to gently tap it, and you may see some movement. Now we're going to go to the other side, and just sort of don't do too much on one side at any time, really. Sort of get it nice and even, and just keep going with that. It was a viewer called Grifter Eck who recommended this technique. Ah. And there we go, it's bashed out. And you can see, here's the fork cup, and that's where the bearings will go. And we've been bashing on this surface, and we've not even damaged it, but it's important to bash on this surface here, and not the one that takes the bearings, because then you've ruined your fork cups. As you can see, the frame now has them out. It's really in a push fit, interference fit, it just goes in like that, uh, to the edge of the frame. So, we've now got every part off the frame, and we can get going with the proper paint stripping. We've just noticed that there's a little bit of a difference between the fork cups for the top and the bottom. As you can see, the one for the bottom has a nice round fat sort of base where the bearings go in to meet the top of the forks. The one for the top of the frame, near where the stem and handlebars are, has a much skinnier bit and also a lot more shallow. So while you're disassembling a bike it's important to notice these little differences so that you rebuild things the correct way. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Bobby Kryptonite here and welcome to yet another Falcon Restoration update. Today we're going to be starting on paint. As you saw yesterday we got the forks all stripped down. Today I've got them masked up and I've made sure that we've got not much paint left in the little nooks and crannies around here. All that remains to be done now is to take away a little bit of extra paint that's left in these little nooks and crannies around here. We're going to use a Dremel and we're going to be using this attachment. I believe it's a sort of diamond pointed thing. It's pretty sharp and it's good for just getting into little areas like that to remove paint. So without any further ado, let's get cracking. got the bit where it goes to chrome masked up, we've got the this little sort of chrome cup and upwards masked up as well. And we're going to give them a clean with some methylated spirits, then get our dust mask on and get primering. Let's see how that goes. For doing the methylated spirits you just want to get a small amount of the methylated spirits onto a clean rag or kitchen paper and just get wiping really. Just try and get rid of any dirt or dust that's on the surface of what you're about to paint just to make sure it's nice and clean otherwise your paint isn't going to stick properly in those affected areas. Okay, having shaken your tin of paint for the best part of two minutes you're now ready to spray. Now I'm going to use this Autotech grey primer, it's just from the Motor Factories, it costs about £3.60 a can it's perfectly good stuff um, so that's why I use it um, we're going to get our dust mask on for health and safety and all that. Uh, these are new dust masks which I got in Sainsbury's yesterday. Not sure how... Well, they're certainly not that easy to fit because uh, they're quite tight, these bands, which should mean uh, that it'll stay on alright. So, I said we're ready to start painting. So you want to stand not too far away, but not too close at the same time. Give it maybe 20 centimetres, good amount of space, so that you don't get any runs and because if you're too close the pressure of the gas coming out of the can is going to push the paint and sort of spread it 
in a really nasty way and you'll have runs and it'll just look awful so it does seem very wasteful having it far away because you're going to get over spray really on everything around here. I'll just get this stripping knife out of the way and that part uh, and so it does seem wasteful but you've got to just go with it and go with a good distance. So let's get started. trying to watch and be careful that I'm not getting paint all over you guys because I don't want to get paint on my nice camera. So now we're painting against the wind which is a challenge shall we say. I just feel like it's getting blown back in my face, I can feel a sort of stinging in my eyes sure that we get the tops of the fork done. Okay, it looks like we've got some good coating going on here. Just make sure you get the underside done as well. Now I think that ought to be enough to protect that inside bit, so next coat will mask up those holes. And we'll also make sure we do the underneath properly. Now my goggles are messing up so I can't really see what I'm doing, so I just hope I'm making an alright job of this. You guys will be able to see better than I can. Just, we've missed a spot there and the wind's not playing the game with us, so we'll get it in the next coat. And now we'll just be sure to do this side. Okay. And we're going to give that 15 or so minutes to dry and we can get going with the next coat. Once you've finished spraying, turn the can upside down and spray until it runs clear. Otherwise the paint will gum up your nozzle. Now that sounds like it's on its way out so we've got a brand new can which we may have to break into for the next coat. Okay, so we've done a few coats of primer and um, there's been a little bit of flatting back in between to make sure that we get a nice finish all around. I'll just switch into manual focus so we can get up close and see a bit of detail. So I've plugged up that and if we go around it's looking quite good. There's a few little areas that I'm not quite so happy with but I'm hoping that perhaps they'll sort themselves out once we get a splash of colour on this. So I'm not sure if I'm going to go for any colour today because um, it's now about 7 in the evening maybe. I'm not sure how much time I've got for doing colour but uh, let's see. That's just a little comparison for you to show you how close a colour match we've got here. It's not bang on but it's pretty good so I'm, I'd be happy with this. I'm, I'm going to be happy with this colour.